Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Green Effect Podcast, Season 3, Episode 5. This is a monumental episode. This is our first episode I have to mark explicit. So make sure you listen in to find out why this episode is explicit, might be a sign of things to come. We talk about the Bank of Canada, and that's actually why... We had to whip out the F-bomb to talk about the Bank of Canada. So make sure you listen in as to what's going on up there and their little debt issue, we will call it. Uh, Second thing we talk about is the uh, new law in British Columbia. Really, really fascinating because if this law whereby their overriding condo corporations to allow rentals comes to Ontario, it could be a game changer. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome to the Green Effect Podcast. Finance, life, business, and everything in between. And now, your host, Stephen Green. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Green Effect Podcast. Wow. Up to episode five of season three, of course. So pretty excited for that. Let's get right into it because we got to talk about this whole Bank of Canada fiasco and you know i think uh for the first time let, i'm gonna mark my podcast as explicit because uh i'm gonna drop the f-bomb and the s-bomb here so if anybody ever watches the show um succession on hbo right so that's about uh a huge multimedia conglomerate as they call where you know the kids are dealing with taking over the company from dad who's kind of losing his mind a little bit if you want to see some serious dysfunction watch this show like if you think your family's messed up watch that show because i'm telling you that one takes the cake anyway there's a line in that show uh macaulay culkin's little brother who's actually kind of a cool character in that show has these incredible one-liners and the one-liner i'll use to describe maybe the bank of canada and the federal government trying to figure things out it's like the shit show at the fuck factory. I don't know any other way to describe it. I, it, it, it. Give me a better analogy. Put it in the comments. I'd love to hear if there's a better analogy for that for the Bank of Canada. And that's why that one liner is why my whole podcast, this episode, is being marked as explicit. All right? All right. Let's get into the Bank of Canada because they were called up in front of the Senate. Um a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was. And of course, a lot of things came out. And it's really interesting to see what they did, where they've come from, and and where they're going, basically. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this really simply. Because listen, like I've told everybody this, I didn't go to school for economics. I'm just a big old mortgage and economics nerd. Okay, Um, I am completely educated on real world experience, school of hard knocks, if you want to call it that, but I'm just a nerd who researches my own stuff, okay? And I think that's kind of a unique perspective because I am kind of the everyday guy, okay? So let's talk about the reckless, and I'm using that term, my friends, the recklessness of the Bank of Canada. So What happened is the Bank of Canada basically holds bonds. And folks, again, if I don't use exact terminology, my disclaimer here is I don't have an economics degree. So just work with me. And hey, if there's a different spin on this, I would love to hear it. Throw it in the comments. We'll talk about it. Okay, I'm 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 open. I'm open to listening to people's thoughts. So Bank of Canada goes ahead. And what the Bank of Canada does is they hold bonds, okay? And the bonds are from the banks, you know, the bonds that you give your cousin for a hundred bucks and, you know, in 20 years they make 20 cents, right? So they hold bonds. So leading up to COVID, everything was good. Inflation was reasonable. We had issues, but nothing like the, again, the shit show we end up in right now. So when COVID hit, the Bank of Canada had to raise funds, Okay, the way the Bank of Canada raise funds is that they purchase bonds. Okay, so a bond is kind of like an IOU, kind of, sort of. Okay, so they're going to buy, for example, bonds from the federal government. Okay, and then when you buy the bond, of course, that pays you interest. Fantastic. 
But what they did during COVID was a little bit different. Because let's face it, the federal government was handing out money during COVID, you know, like it was going out of style because they were trying to prop everything up. Fair enough, right? It, in principle, fair enough, right? It, it, they butchered the delivery, okay? And I mean, you know, they make some pretty bad decisions. A bad decision in my world is, you know, oh, shoot, I maybe shouldn't have bought that shirt. I don't look really good in it. And that cost me 30 bucks, right? The government mess up is what, that $52 million or whatever that they bought uh, for the Arrive Can app, right? So, you know, we all kind of make tough decisions and mistakes here and there. But what the Bank of Canada did was instead of buying it from the government, these bonds, they went ahead and purchased them through the big banks, right? And, and, and the way they, the reason why they did that was they said, okay, look, we're going to buy the government bonds from you folks, okay? And we're going to take that money, and this is amazing, <laughs> this is so great. And I'm sure someone who's really smart could, could tell me if this is a good idea or not. I kind of know the answer, but I'm sure there's more reasoning behind this. But they bought the bonds from the banks, right? And you know the banks, RBC, TD, Scotia, they ain't poor. And they said, look, we're going to buy these bonds because we need the money, okay? But we're going to take that money that you are, we're buying the bonds from you, and we're going to put it in your Bank of Canada bank account so you can use it. Fair enough, right? However, like every other bank, you know, when you put money in your bank account, they're going to pay you interest? Well, the Bank of Canada puts you know, a few billion in CIBC's Bank of Canada bank account, well, you got to pay interest on that to the bank. So you can see where this circle of hot flaming fire of you know what is going to go. So they bought a ton of bonds to prop up this whole pandemic problem. Okay. Well, guess what? Now the rates are going up. So they're kind of like, my head really hurts as they're hitting their head against the brick wall. My head hurts, my head hurts, my head hurts. Okay, well, stop hitting against the wall. So the issue now is they got to pay higher interest on this money on the bonds. So the Bank of Canada, in essence, is now losing money, okay? They raised a whole ton during the pandemic, but, and here's the final kick to the you know what the bank of canada is not allowed to make money and hold it they have to give it back to the federal government so they made all this money but they can't hold it that's just the rule of the rules and the law of the land of the bank of canada okay again Someone with an economics degree can probably explain this one to me like I'm a two-year-old, okay? However, bottom line is, they can't. They've got to take that money and give it back to the federal government. Funny how it, all, it always ends up at the feet of the feds. Anyway, that's a whole other podcast. But now the issue is, we've given away all of our profits to the feds, but now we're losing money. So we've given you, federal government, all of our profits, now we're in a deficit going forward. So the whole thought of the Bank of Canada is now losing money. Well, it's because they gave all the profits back to the feds who spent the money. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that we're going to maybe get out of this. Okay, and again, the Bank of Canada is going to have to steal some ideas from other central banks, like our friends south of the border, which is kind of scary to think, because I know they're in a whole heap of problems too. but again another podcast so how does the bank of canada get out of this well there's a few different ways they're going to have to either suck it up lower the rates and deal with it themselves and exi with existing monetary policy or they can say look we're going to kind of kick this can down the road and as we make our money back well, we're not giving it back to you, federal government. We got to pay off our debt, right? We owe some money over here. We're going to pay it off a little bit, okay? Or 
Third option, they get the money from the federal government. So in other, words, in other words, give us our money back. Let's pay off the debt for the problem we created. And let's call it a day. Right? Let's get back to Tim Hortons, have our coffee, and, and, and all is good again. So the Bank of Canada has options. There's no doubt here. And let's take a quick time out to talk about our sponsor, Gotta Pay the Bills, folks. Top Consulting is the newest and greatest in your business growth plan. Top Consulting brings a combination of individual goals, accountability, and the most important thing always forgotten about execution and combines them with what your business goals are. It's not as simple as here's my goal, go get it. It's about what is the goal? Is it the right goal? What does the goal look like? How are we going to get to the end result? Top Consulting, we start at the end and work our way back, making sure we have proper milestones and execution timelines for you to get where you are right now with your business, right to that end goal that starts at the beginning. Top Consulting, make sure you visit topconsulting.ca where you can get some great information on our programs, complimentary webinars, and hey, don't take my word for it. Have a look at the homepage for real client testimonials. Oh, and just to make sure you really do go to the website, make sure you mention the Green Effect podcast and you get 25% off the introductory fit assessment. Go get them. So let's talk about the viability of some of these options that the Bank of Canada can get themselves out of this problem, okay? Is the federal government going to bail out the Bank of Canada? Probably not, okay? And this is not a political podcast, but I'm pretty sure our good friends there up in the Liberal government who love to spend money and inject money and if you haven't heard already, the governments, the provincial governments, the feds, right across the country, folks, they are injecting cash into the economy, okay? Yes, the regular middle class needs help right now. Our middle class, friends, is being abolished. Household balance sheets are up in smoke, and we've got property values dropping, People's savings are going right out the window. Credit card balances are on the increase. Okay, our middle class, which apparently is supposed to be what we all are here in Canada, it is almost done. You're either going to be upper class and got lots and lots of money, or, or sorry, lots and lots of money in assets, or you're going to be lower class and you will be below the poverty line. Not to digress, but because we'll get back to the Bank of Canada problem in a second, but we have, we talk about the poverty line right now. I think the poverty line is something like twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 a year in income or something like that. I got news for you, friends. Our poverty line, I feel, and I got no math or calculator to, to justify this, but when a head of lettuce is six ninety nine at no frills, our poverty line is pushing fifty to sixty thousand right now, and I don't think people. I, I don't think we're still in denial. We're not there yet, where we can really grasp this. And believe me, your reality is about to hit in twenty twenty three. Okay, unless Tiffy and uh, Tiffy Boy and and his friends get their shit together and realize that we need some true forward guidance. Okay, so let's just come back now, okay, to the Bank of Canada issue. So if the federal government is not going to give them back the money, okay, because they're too busy printing money and giving back tax credits, and, um, and I know, and this is something that the middle class needs, but for example, many provinces have come out with um, tax credits for childcare, etc., desperately needed because of what has happened. But let's assume the feds are not going to give the money back, okay? This problem that the Bank of Canada has, 
is apparently not unique among central banks. So what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to kick this can down the road a little bit. Mike's my, my suspicion, they're not going to get a dime back from the feds. Forget it. That's like blood from a rock. They're going to have to extend this out. They're going to have to drop rates a little bit, make some money and start paying back their own damn debt. So this is something, I don't know how they're going to handle it. Other, other countries have done this though, because other countries did the same thing, folks. Okay. They propped up their economy through COVID. So now we got to get back on the straight and narrow. And I think the Bank of Canada is going to have to get to a place where they understand that 2% may not, may not be the target anymore. We are in a different time and era today than we were 10 years ago. Hell, three years ago. So they're going to have to start to understand that 2% is not going to fly and they got to get themselves out of this hole now that they're expecting to have over the next few years as they pay interest on all these bonds and they're not and they're and they're jacking up their own rate on their own debt. My last point on the Bank of Canada. And I think this is really important and for me life experience I've learned my lesson. Okay? Everything you do in finance look big picture because Every time the Bank of Canada speaks up about forward guidance, okay, I use the term reckless at the beginning of this podcast. When the Bank of Canada came out and in 2020 and 2021 and said, go spend money, my Canadians, go. Rates are going to be low. I always say for a long time, they said at least until 2023 or end of 2023. Well, guess what? We took that advice as gospel. And we all acted, we all f followed the lead. Follow, uh, guide me my lead. This is what we did. Okay. I have a very big issue with credibility at the Bank of Canada right now. And I think what we all need to start to do, and I'm not going down the anarchy road and, you know, getting the hot tub up in Ottawa and protest. I'm not going with that. What I'm trying to say is, Folks, do your own research. We're in a day and time where, listen, we can go to Dr. Google and figure out what, we can figure out what ails us, okay? Be very careful, okay? And lesson learned over here, I have a variable rate mortgage, lesson learned, okay? Ask questions, do your own research. Don't take necessarily what our leaders tell us at the government bank of canada level as gospel do your own research okay and listen as i said lesson learned right here so all right let's stop that uh stop my commentary god i feel i feel better after getting that off my chest man again i think i said this in a previous season of the podcast it's like this is therapy for me i feel good i'm not you guys can't charge me for my therapy session as you listen to me in your cars on your way to work or whatever, but damn, I feel good right now. Okay, uh, one last thing just to mention, uh, just, uh, I, I, it's crazy that this is a footnote, but I just wanted to mention this to everybody. And this is something that could be coming very soon to a condo corp near you. British Columbia, which seems to be the leader <laughs> in housing policy, which is kind of crazy to think because they got some issues over there, my friends. They got some issues, but they have announced that all condo corporations can no longer ban rentals. Now, let's just wrap our brains around this for a moment. So you buy a condo. And you know what? Maybe you pay a little bit of a higher maintenance fee or whatever because you you did the research, your realtor did the research, and you found a condominium that does not allow rentals. Well, guess what? The government's going to swoop in and say, too damn bad. We are going to allow rentals no matter what if you are a condo. Now, more to come on this and what it means and stuff like that. but. Think about that <laughs> in Southern Ontario, OK? 
okay? You've got beautiful condos, you've got different types of condos, you have, you, have, you have all these condo rules, and the government can now swoop in and say, too bad. <laughs> you can rent it if you want, no problem. Now, again, this raises a lot of questions. Is it right? Is it wrong? Man, I'm not 100% sure. But this is going to change things considerably, okay? Because if Condo Corp's no longer can have that restriction, how does that change resales? How does that change new builds? Think about that for a moment. How does that change new builds, right? So there's a lot of things coming. And as I said, if you look in history, at history, which I'm talking more history the last 10 years, everything that BC has done, at the minimum, Ontario has followed in some way, shape, or form. Non-speculation tax is an example. Uh, ban on foreign buyers, that's more of a federal thing. But this could change the landscape because with so many vacancies, and BC, keep in mind, I think it has a vacancy rate of like, one point nothing percent. I'm sure someone will correct me on that, but it's not it's not high. It's very, very low and depressed. So, you know, will that now open things up to say, huh, I got a condo here. I can't really sell it because my values dropped. Hell, I'm gonna rent it out. I wasn't able to before, but now I can. Is that truly gonna help the vacancy rate in Ontario? Let's see what BC does. To my friends in British Columbia, thank you for being the test market for Ontario. I think we should say that more often. On that note, stay fit and have fun. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong show. Thank you for listening to the Green Effect Podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Google Play so you catch the next episode. And don't forget to leave a review. Much appreciated.